All right, so quarter two has happened. Halfway through the year, I decided it would be a good idea to see if I've read anything I said that I wanted to read <laughs> and figure out if I still want to read the things I said I wanted to read or not. Um, I do think I actually came up with like, I don't know, a video idea for patrons from this, which is kind of fun, like a little challenge since in quarter one, I wanted to challenge myself more. So yeah, I'm going to go through three videos and maybe later we'll do a video looking at quarter two releases specifically, seeing kind of which ones I want to skip, which ones might I might pick up, which ones I for sure want to try. I just really haven't looked into what came out in quarter two. Like I still know what's coming out, but what quarter they've come out in, who knows? And it's really not the easiest thing to look up. <laughs> so this one's more, I'm going through three videos. Oh, I already did. I wrote down books that I meant on those videos and we're going to go through each of them and see uh, what, what have I accomplished? So the first one is series to start in 2024. I make this every year around Thanksgiving week. It's one of my staples that I do because I don't know, I, it gets me pumped. Thanksgiving's about when I start to get pumped for the end of the year, New Year stuff. So that's usually my first end of the year video. And so progress has been made in a lot of things. I have no idea if I'm still gonna continue, I have no clue. So let's start with the things that I have touched on it. So War Child, I tried, DNF'd. Um, it was really solid, I was just struggling. Like the first part I really liked, and the second part was a bit of a struggle, but if we had focused on a relationship, I could have kept going. But then by the third part, we were splitting up that relationship. And I'm like, eh, I don't know. It's not a never say never. Maybe I could go back to it one day because it truly wasn't bad. I was just losing all of my reading momentum trying to read that. Uh, Clockwork Boys. I did finish that duology um, and I've read Sword Heart. So I'm like still continuing in that world. So that seems like a win. Um, Terra Ignota. I've read three books in it. Yes, I have read The Will to Battle. We'll talk about that later on this week when I do my Friday reads, but I've done it. I've done it. I've finished it. It was on so many TBRs. That's why I'm just like, yes. Uh, yeah, Terra Ignota, going great. It feels like every time I have a series to start, there's one series that I'm like, oh, it's so good. And I finish it all in the air, which is why sometimes I fail at my series to start because I'm usually trying to finish series, not start 10 series, but it allows for flexibility as well. Um, I said I wanted to read Stormlight. I've read three books in Stormlight, so that's going well. And then one that I swapped out unintentionally was I wanted to reread Nine Fox Gambit this year. And I think that's going to be pushed to next year because inadvertently I reread the Inheritance Trilogy this year with my friend Laura. So that kind of took that slot of reading time in my mind, which is not to say that maybe if at some point this year I feel the need to organize a buddy read of Nine Fox Gambit, it could happen. But in my head, I kind of swapped them out. So things that I did not get to. We'll start with one where I at least have the book so I could start it and that's The Wolf. I just haven't sat down to try this yet. Um, there was one time during a um, Patreon read along week that I gave it a shot for like a page or two and I was like, nope, brain's not feeling this. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, it wasn't like such a like, this is gonna be awful. I won't like it experience. It was more just like headspace was not ready for the sentences. And the rest of these I like have not touched. So we have Voice of War, which is the first book in a self-published fantasy series. And I believe the fantasy series is completed, which is why I put it here. I am still looking for recommendations for self-published completed science fiction series. So if you have any of those, keyword being completed, um, just cause I just wanna try things that are completed when you know I'm trying new stuff in a new area of publishing for me, which I'm still working on my self-publishedness. Um, we have The Cloud Roads by Martha Wells. And like, I still want to try this because I know people who did not like The Witch King who really love The Cloud Roads. So I don't want to make my experiences with Witch King and Murderbot make it so I don't try this, especially because I did like Murderbot. But at the same time, I'm starting to get to this oversaturated point of how popular Martha Wells is and how much she just hasn't worked for me. Like I like popular authors. Like we got some Sanderson over here. We got some Robin Hobb over here. Like nothing on my shelf screams, ooh, I am like very niche. I don't read popular people. But like, she just hasn't been working for me. And I am just like a little done with how many awards she wins when I don't necessarily think she's really pushing the boundaries that extremely. Um, so I don't know. I still want to try it because I do think it's unique. I just, this maybe I just won't feel the need to try and check it out though. I haven't been reaching for it. Um, another one is The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps. I do want to get to this. I think it's just a duology of novellas. That's why I put it on this list. So I just need to go check it out. I, need, I think the problem with this one is I haven't had it readily available. So probably after I film this, I should go to Libby and see what the hold time is. 
And then the last one is the Red Mars series. This one, I, even when I made that video, I was like, I don't know if I'll get to this. But this is one of those uh, more classic science fiction authors that I just haven't gotten to yet. And I just thought this would be an okay trilogy to start with. Um, and especially when I made this video, I really had felt like I hadn't been re reading science fiction. And in general, my science fiction reading has improved immensely this year. So in general, the hole I wanted it to fill has been naturally filled with other things. So I don't know, again, if I'm going to reach for it. Um, but I'm not necessarily like, I'm not going to read it. But have I checked it out from the library? No. So there is that. It hasn't been on a TBR since I've made that video. So then I had a video at the start of the year because I made a I made a TBR cart like I built it like I didn't I didn't make it from scratch like I bought one and I assembled it and it has my TBR books on it and I really like it and I made a priority thirteen books that I wanted to read like it has all my TBR books and I can read any of them but I just had thirteen that I was like I would really like to read these in the year so how have I done with that um, the answer is not well because <laughs> in theory you should read like a book a month when you do things like that. And um, I think I've read two and I tried one <laughs> from those 13. So the ones I read were two like the lightning, which I love. And um, the other one was Lysium, which I also really enjoyed. That was a weird science fiction novella. But otherwise I have put a bunch of these things on TBRs, but I have not gotten to them. Um, so You Made a Fool with Death and Your Beauty has been on a TBR. I really should prioritize it. I've just been reading other romances. So, and I don't usually read more than one to two romances a month at most. And even then that's a little bit new for me. <laughs> so that hasn't happened. Juniper and Thorn, I knew would be a fall read. I have been saving that for the fall. So I don't feel bad that I haven't picked that one up yet. Uh, the Wolf, we already mentioned in a previous part of a list. So I really should try that because I have it on two separate lists. Um, we have Unraveling, which I did put on my TBR for this month. So maybe I'll get to it. Tentative plan. <laughs> Another like romance I have is Bitter Medicine, which is more of a contemporary urban fantasy romance, which I do want to get to. I think I just have to, I'm very mood ready about romances. Uh, let's see, we have Chilling Effects 2 and 3. Um, I have read Valerie Valdez this year. I just haven't read the ones that I put on my list. Um, I did try the Gin Bot of Shantyport. Um, I wasn't just, I just wasn't in the mood and I was really hoping they'd be an audiobook. But there just isn't, so I have to really be in a good physical reading headspace. And it's actually really hard to get the Kindle, like from the library. So I have a physical, but I like to, when I'm reading something, to have it Kindle and physical so that when I'm in a situation where maybe the lighting's not as good or I'm in bed, I can read the Kindle. So that, that was kind of, at the time, a big issue. Um, and I have Into the Light by Marco Shiru, uh, which I still want to try. And then, so like the video idea I have, though, um, cause I had in that video I was watching, I had books that would explode, which I didn't remember. Not all of these would explode, just, just a few. So we have always been here was a book that would explode one. I had to read one chilling effect book and then the August Kitko and the Mechas from space. Those were my like three explosion books. So I think I should spend a week reading those, <laughs> maybe a week and a half, a week and hard DNF, just like I did with my Nebula's video for my patrons. Um, and I think that'd be a good and also help me catch up a little bit on the school. Like I still actually want to read most of these. <laughs> There's still books on my physical TBR. Part of the struggle is I keep buying new physical TBR books, which I am actually reading. Um, it's just, you know, I need to keep these on, on my forefront. There's a reason I picked them out. What am I doing? <laughs> so that that's the thing. I need to read The Wolf and I want to maybe do that video, trying those three out, hard Dean neffing when possible. And then in my quarter one reset video, I mentioned a bunch of books that I would want to read. Some that were non-speculative because I felt like I was not sticking in my non-speculative roots. And then some books that were released in quarter one that I hadn't gotten to yet and I would like to still try and get to. Um, so the three that were just backlist non-speculative that I had were Lessons in Chemistry. I have not read that. It's still on my TBR cart over there. Maybe next time I need an audiobook. I feel like that could be a really good audiobook book. Um, we have The Shadow of the Wind, which is one that's on Ryan's shelf because he's read that and loved that. Haven't read that yet. But I did read Demon Copperhead, which was amazing and why I really wanted to push myself to read something. So even though I said, man, it'd be great if I read these three books in the next quarter and I've only read one, that was a success because I read one and it was really good. <laughs> um, so yeah, 
I don't think I want to add anything more to that. I think I would still like to get to the shadow of the wind just because I've heard such amazing things. Lessons in chemistry, it's more like I feel obligated to give it a shot because people in my life who recommended it to me really love it. And so I'm just a sucker for that. All right. And then something that switched from a maybe to a yes, because in my quarter one reset, I had books that I was like, maybe I'll try these out. Um, and so one of them, I switched to the yes pile because I purchased it. So therefore I for sure have plans hypothetically to read it. And that's The Emperor and the Endless Palace. So recommended by Tammy. And then I also heard good things from Kayla at Books and Lala. And then when I was in Canada, I bought it because two Canadian booktubers got me interested and it's really pretty. It's a very pretty book. It's short. It's a debut author. I haven't been good about reading debuts this year. I've been very in my comfort zone in terms of reaching for things that are new, but by authors I've read from before. So I thought that would be good. And then I actually was fairly good at my quarter one books I want to read that I hadn't gotten to yet. This is probably my best percentage ratio because in general, have I been doing great? No, <laughs> no, I have not. Um, so I wanted to read Womb City. I did. It didn't work for me. It's kind of one of my biggest disappointments of the year, alas, but I read it. And then I wrote down Poverty by America, which I didn't realize it was the paperback release, but still I read it. So that was cool. That was a thing I wanted to read and it's non-speculative. So also working with that. The one I didn't get to was Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. And I'm just scared of it. It has so many mixed reviews, but I just, I want to have my own opinion. I have an arc, but every time the audiobook becomes available, I keep pushing it because I have other audiobooks that I'm listening to. So that, that's my problem there. So yeah, that's me checking in on a bunch of random lists that I've made it through the year and seeing if I'm actually any good at it. And to be quite honest, before I looked at them, I thought I was doing okay. Like I really did. Like I was like, I'm reading books. They're on my physical TBR and I'm reading them. And you know, if things are going well. Um, and apparently that is revisionist history because I am reading some things, but not really, not nearly as well as I, I thought I was like truly like, yeah. <laughs> But that's okay. I am still enjoying my reading year. Um, it's just good to keep these at the forefront. And I am excited to do that video of like these books will explode. And they're all science fiction too. So I just feel like thematically, that'll be fun. Watch it be so painful because I won't like anything. But that's at least knowledge within itself, right? Um, let me know how you've been doing. How are you resetting for the second half of the year as we are midway through summer? Um, if you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Ooh, I don't know. Let's leave a ghost for Warm Hand of Ghosts because I really should try that out. Does anyone who's read it feel like it's seasonal? Like, should I attempt to read it in the fall or early winter? Or is it fine any time of year? I just know it's World War I, but I don't know what time of year. I feel like ghosts make me think of winter, but I don't know why. I think it's, is it because there used to be a bunch of ghost stories around Christmas time? I don't know historically anything about ghosts, but I think of ghosts in terms of fall and winter, but I don't know if that's the vibe of this book. Anyways. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.